Okay, again, hi everybody. I'm Stacy with the Iowa City Public Library here to get you started with Google Drive. So let's just start by talking about the company Google. They got their start as a search engine in 1998. Does anyone remember that moment when, when Google was brand new? Yeah. Um, they made their mark with a simple interface and an improved algorithm for returning results. And over time, they grew and offered more services. For instance, raise your hand if you've ever used Google Maps, the Google Photos app, the Google Chrome web browser, um, the Android operating system, basically any smartphone that's not an iPhone, YouTube, which is a company that they own, Google Translate, <laughs> and then finally, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, which we will talk about a little bit later which sort of duplicates Microsoft Office. <clears throat> so Google restructured itself in 2015 and created Alphabet Incorporated as its parent company. And Alphabet is the world's fourth largest technology company. Last time I looked, it's one of the world's most valuable companies at number 11 on the Fortune 500. So they're making a lot of money. And how do they do that when they seem to offer most things for free? That's because about 86% of their revenue comes from advertising. So that's user clicks using AdSense and Google Ads. Every day, Google returns 1 billion search results globally, and they show ads alongside those results. And they also keep data about how users behave online, which is your searches, your YouTube watching, your Gmail content to some extent, and then they match that up with the company's ads that are most likely to match your interests. So maintaining your privacy with a company like this is a topic for a whole other class, but I just wanted to point it out and remind you to be sensible, maybe don't store any files in Google Drive that would be devastating if someone accessed it. So things with your social security number or a list of your passwords, things like that. But basically anytime you store data on the internet, you put yourself at a, a small risk for a cyber attack. So you wanna think carefully about what you share on there. That said, all of these Google serve, oh, go ahead, Sue. And you're muted, sorry. So when you say that, like I use LastPass to store as a password manager, are okay. those kinds of things also vulnerable? Oh, you know, I haven't used LastPass. I am sure that any password manager is going to be encrypted in a way that it's not just <laughs> your, your logins and your password out there on the internet. Okay. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's <laughs> a good question. But for instance, I, I know this is stupid, but on my computer, I do have a file saved to my desktop with my logins and passwords for things like most people maybe have a, a little booklet or something. And so putting that on Google Drive would just be a small risk. Yeah, this is what I have as a backup. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Any other security questions? If brief? Okay, if they come up later, feel free to ask. Um, oh, and there is a chat. Okay, thank you, yes. It's encrypted password protection, that's good. Okay, so that said, all of these Google services are amazingly useful and you access them with your Google account. So he, who here has a Gmail account or some other kind of Google account? Great. Um, for anyone who doesn't, you would have one Google login to gain access to all their free services. That's Gmail, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Photos, etc. Um, if you, sometimes people are confused that they have another email account that they love, a Hotmail, Yahoo, MCHSI, UIOA email account, and they don't want to mess that up somehow by having a Gmail account as well. It's no problem. You would never have to log into your Gmail account if you didn't want to. It's really just a tool to gain access to this other software. 
And so the main focus for tonight will be to talk about Google Drive. Did we get to do a hand raise already for who's used Google Drive? Let's do that now. A couple of people, okay. So this is basically online storage space for you to keep files. Did anyone here ever have server space that was theirs at work or school? Or maybe you remember when you carried around a floppy disk or a USB drive and then added, opened, deleted files from it? So imagine Google Drive is like your personal computer on which you have photos, PDFs, music, letters, all stored in folders or loose files together. You could move some of those onto Google Drive as a backup you could put something on Google Drive in order to access it easily from any other device. And wherever you log into your Google account, you can see what you've saved there. So this is what they call the cloud, since the files are actually stored in Google servers somewhere, but you can get them from anywhere, like a cloud that hovers over you and follows wherever you go. Are there any sort of conceptual questions about how this works before I um, show you how I, what it looks like and log in for you. Stacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Um, my name's Mary and I just wondered, uh, we have Carbonite and I know that's a, a paid service and you know, has other features, but is this just sort of a different storage system and, and how would you compare it to Carbonite? So I'm not familiar with Carbonite. Um, oh, okay. But you're you're paying for um, for online storage. Well, yes, I'm paying right for online. It's a backup. It's all got like a a cloud backup. Okay. Yeah. So they're probably very similar in the way that they behave and the level of security, things like that. One difference, probably, that I'll show you in a little bit is that the amount of storage space you get on Google Drive is limited. And my guess is that if you're paying for that backup, wow. you're getting lots and lots of storage space. Okay, okay. And one other question, and maybe you'll cover this, but one of the things about Carbonite is if you delete something on your hard drive, it's backing up constantly. With Google Drive, do you manually control what is and isn't stored there, or is it backing up automatically? It's not an automatic backup. You're right, oh. that's, a, that's a major difference. So okay. it'll be you choosing to put something on it, just like you would choose to put something onto a flash drive or a, a floppy disk or whatever you're accustomed to. So it's not mirroring your drive at all. It's stuff that you're just, it's like a closet that you can have like an added closet space or something, right? Yeah, or like, like a briefcase that you don't have to carry <laughs> around, but you could get to wherever you go, yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jerry, did you have a different question? I do. Will um, you be telling us how to take things out of it? Yeah. Because there's some things that I might have signed or someone might have sent me that I don't, I don't know how they got in there. It's probably, you know, somebody in the family or something, but I just want to get them out. Like yeah. Some business things maybe are in there. So yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, um, no. I'll mention kind of how those might show up and, and how to clean it up. There yep. must be some security thing, so that doesn't happen without your knowledge or what? I must have agreed to it. <laughs> yeah, so, so some companies or organizations may share a file via Google Drive. Yeah. And so it could be that you just click on a link on a website and you don't realize that it's sharing it over Google Drive okay. instead of on their own web server. So I also have some, some built up things on my personal Google Drive that I don't really need anymore that I just accessed that one time. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. Then I think if there aren't any more questions right now, I'll switch to sharing my screen and um, start demonstrating for you. And at this point with my screen shared, I will not be able to see you if you raise your hand or something. So um, please do interrupt me if you need to ask a question. Um, let's see here. 
So I'm going to get logged into Google Drive now. The way I do that is I usually go to drive.google.com. And I'm going to get logged in. And this is sort of a fake account that I set up um, for the library just today. So everything has been added on it today. And I'll show you how I can tell that. Um, but let's just take a look at this screen. You can tell that I'm in Drive and not any other of the Google products by checking here. And going down the left side, I'm in My Drive. So these are things that, um, that I saved onto my Google Drive. Some of these were made in a Google Docs program and you might get to know these icons. So this sample letter was made in Google Docs. I happen to know that that's the icon versus this W is a document that was made in Microsoft Word. And the, the dot doc is another clue for that and the word word <laughs> as I hover over there. Um, and so you can see I've got these six documents, one's a movie, one's a spreadsheet, etc. If I want to upload something into to Google Drive, I'll click on this plus and new, and I can make a new folder in here to organize what I already have or the main thing I want is this file upload. That will take me to my, uh, my computer options where I can choose a file and upload it. And you can see this was a very tiny little file so that went very fast. If you were uploading a video or something big, it can take a, you know, several seconds for it to upload. And this AAA test showed up in my list right away. I can upload any kind of thing that you could save to your own computer. So it could be something made in Microsoft Word, something I downloaded off the internet, a photo, a video, anything like that. The next section I want to point out is shared with me. This is the big appeal for using Drive, is the ability to share. So just as I can find a file online from anywhere that I've stored in my Drive, I can give someone else access to it too. So sometimes this might come in handy is say you're planning a baby shower or some other kind of event. Um, I've used Google Drive helping my sister with her resume planning a wedding reception guest list, things like that. So if you're part of an organization or if you just have people to collaborate with in your family or friends, this can be very useful for that. Um, and as we mentioned before, sometimes professional organizations may share files via Google Drive and you'll see them in this shared with me category. So from my personal account, I shared um, a, a slideshow from a previous class. I shared with this account a fake resume, <laughs> and I shared a movie of my storm damage from the derecho. Um, sharing the video with my family that way was really useful because this file was too big to send in an email. I didn't really need to put it out for the public on YouTube or on social media. So sending this private link to that video was was the best way that I wanted to share it. Um, so, oh, yep, yeah, go ahead. I just have a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're going to cover it later, that's fine. But so let's say that so this once it's uploaded, um, does the person who's going to work on it you upload a document in a certain format. Does the person that's uploading it have to have that same software on their computer? I mean, who's reviewing it have to have the same software to operate within Google Drive or once it's uploaded, can it be, can you collaborate if you don't have the software for like a Word document versus some other format? Right, so as long as it was something in, in Word, or Excel or PowerPoint, 
those three will all work with Google Docs programs. If you had like a, um, a Photoshop document or something that requires specialized software, then it would not work to collaborate within this window on that. But for most things, you can. So yeah, I will, I will show that um, in some detail. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, let me just show you a few more pointers on how this first screen is laid out. Um, for instance, I shared this sample letter earlier with my personal account. And if I click on this I that's in a circle, I can view the details about it, including the activity. If I start from the bottom, you'll see that I created this sample letter at 1230 today. Then I shared it with my personal account and I chose the setting to allow editing. And then you can see that several minutes later, I opened it with my personal account and I made edits to it. So you can sort of keep track of the behavior that happens by clicking on this I. And I'll go into some more details about the sharing in a little bit as well. Um, just really quickly, coming down the left here. So these are the things that I made. Shared with me are things that someone else made and they're allowing me to either see or make changes to. The recent um, folder might be helpful to you if you end up using this a lot and you've got lots in there, but it's not essential. You can star things, but that's also optional. And then there's a trash. Um, for the person who asked about deleting something <laughs> that they didn't want in there anymore, I can click on this one that I just uploaded and click on the trash can to remove it. If, um, I'll, and I'll give you a variation on how to remove something, <laughs> remove access to something if you still want to keep the file but keep it private in a little bit. Um, so that's, that's the main navigation along the left here. The next thing below that is storage. So I, on my personal account, I'm at something like 80% of my storage used. So <laughs> I set this one up so that it wouldn't look so scary because I'm using very, very little of this new account that I set up. But you can click on the numbers here and it'll give you all of your files in order of biggest to smallest. And if you need to free up some space, um, that can be a quick way to find what's worth deleting first. If you click on it once, then those options show up at the right. If you don't have anything selected, they go away. Another option that they give you is buying storage. You can click there to see their pricing options, but ideally you would be able to use all of this for free. Um, before I'd even consider paying for extra storage, I would go through all of my Gmail and all of my drive files to eliminate things. Um, one thing that may not be obvious is that this storage amount is a combination of all of your Google products. So it includes all of your emails and photos. Um, they all share that 15 gigabytes. In the grand scheme of things, the person who said they have Carbonite, I'm sure they give you much, much more than 15 gigabytes. But if you just really use this as a sharing tool or a small backup for things that you'd like to access while you're away from home, then 15 gigabytes will get you pretty far. Okay, let's, um, let's come back to my drive and talk about some actions here. So if I open up a document, let's open up my equipment list. And I'm going to double click. Since this particular file is a Word document, it opens up in this sort of preview. I have some options here. I could print it, I could download it, or I can choose to open it with Google Docs. This option has been around for a while, but 
um, just today they popped up uh, like a, a little reminder saying that the this feature had gotten even better being able to open and edit something made in Microsoft Office within their Google's interface. So they're still making tweaks to this and trying to make it very seamless for you to use this with Word documents or Google Doc documents. Um, and that's true for um, spreadsheets as well as slideshows. So if I choose to open this with Google Docs and there's a drop down, I can't imagine that you'd be interested in these, but possibly. So I'm just going to click open with Google Docs. This brings up the Docs software. This is all online through the website. There's nothing to download to your computer at all, as you would if you were using Microsoft Word. Um, just a quick overview of what I'm seeing. Actually, I'll, I'll come back, I'm sorry. I'll come back to the overview of how Google Docs works. Just wanted to show you that I can open up that file, um, even though it's not technically in their native format. If I um, want to rename something or see information about it, I can click on it once. If you're on a Windows computer, you could right click. On Apple, you could control click to see some options. Or you can also, once you've selected one, click these three dots up at the corner. And I could rename this. So I could put some spaces in there, say OK. And then let's talk about sharing options. So let's say I want to share this PDF with, um, with others. Collaborating on the files is such an important part of this. And you'll have to decide between these two options. The first one is this little sort of a paper clip or a chain to create a link. And the other one is this person where you can share it with a person. You'll want to think about some ramifications before you do either of these. So collaborating on the files um, works <laughs> a couple different ways. But if everyone who's given access to a file can make permanent changes, then everyone else will see those permanent changes when they open up the file next. There are no varying copies of the file that um, come into existence like you would if you were emailing. So let's say I had an, a Word document and I sent it to you as an attachment in an email. And then two of you downloaded it and made edits to it. We would have three different versions of that file. The one that you saved and edited, the one that someone else saved and edited, and my original. When you share the file in Google, it's all just the one document. So giving someone permission to make changes means you have less control over your document in the long run, but you might accept that risk as a way of, of working together. So this is why Google has three levels of sharing. They might, you can let people view, comment, or edit. So if we do um, the, these two options at the top, the link option, I'll show you. Um, you'll want to choose what happens if someone gets this link. It, if it's restricted, then only the people who it's been shared with can open the link. I generally change it to anyone with the link can view it. And then there's a drop down here and you can control if they just view, if they comment, or if they can edit. So if you wanted to share a file and you didn't want anyone to be able to make changes to it, you just wanted people to see it, then I would share the link and let them view. If you have a friend who does not have Gmail and you want them to be able to edit it, then you could send it as a link with the editor and I think that would work. 
but um, but if you have friends who have Gmail, then sharing it with them directly is probably the easiest way. This, I, this is getting a little confusing, but um, I'll, I'll run back through my script and, <laughs> and if anything is, is fuzzy, we'll talk about it again. So the shareable link for someone to view creates a link that you could email to someone, post on social media, put it on a website. Um, and even though that could get out of hand quickly, this option about what they can do with it is powerful and, um, and it might be worth it. So let's say if you're planning a surprise party, you could set it so that um, anyone who has the link can see it, but then remember that if one person shares that link with the birthday person, they would be able to see it as well. So I can copy that link and then I could go to my Gmail account in here and I'll show you an example of what that looks like in an email. That loads up. So here's an example of one that I sent to myself. I just typed a regular email and then I pasted in that link that I got. And since this is all within Google, it made it look like an attachment. Um, and so that was just, that's just a convenience factor. So if you clicked on this link here, or if you clicked on this, it would do the same thing. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. If if the document that you're sharing that you want them to edit, it can't be a PDF, right? It has to be a Word document or... So yeah, so here I have a PDF that I've saved in my drive. Um, if I double click this, it can try to open it in Google Docs and it may or may not be able to make it editable. We'll see what happens. So this is was sort of a heavily formatted document that I created. And so it's trying to understand, it's trying to pull out the text and put it in a format, but you can see this is pretty ugly. This is not how it actually looked. Um, you know, this is how it should look. <laughs> and that looks pretty different. So I would not rely on this as a way to edit a PDF with others. Um, you would wanna share it in the format that you um, that you were creating it in. But if you want to share a PDF with someone um, just so that they can print it or so that they can download it to their computer and then type in their name and fill out a form, that should work great. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I feel like this didn't uh, trip off my tongue quite as well as it could have. So if you're confused, I won't judge you whatsoever. <laughs> Basically, the link is one way to do it. Let me show you the sharing option and then we can, we can regroup. So let's say I want to share this, uh, um, this equipment list or something, share the sample letter. I can click on the little person icon and I've got some choices here. So I can type in an, a Gmail email address and I get the same option off to the right of how much control I'm giving this person. I can let them just view it, comment or make changes and then I can choose whether they're notified about it or not, which basically means sending an email to them. And I can type in my email message, hello, I'm giving you access to this file, help me edit it. And this is just a little preview of that file name, it's called sample letter. I can put in more than one person here. 
things like that, um, but they'll all have the same level of access if you do it that way. There is a little setting option um, that you might see fit to make changes to. Um, but for the most part, if you're sharing it, um, you'll either let them edit it or just let them view it for the most part. And then this will send an email to my personal account. And if I'm clicked on there, I can click on that I and see, oh, I already shared it with me. Sorry, <laughs> that's a bad example. You'll be able to see that, that someone has that access to it. I shared that item with Stacy. If, um, if I change my mind to remove the permission I gave to people, um, there's a way that you can do that. And partially, one way to do it is to come into the share, see who's part of this, and here's my email address. And I can switch it so that I'm just someone who can view it, or I can give it away to that person if I don't want to be in charge of this file anymore, or I can remove them, remove their access. That would mean that if they went to click on the link that they got from me, or if they looked in their Google Drive and the things that were shared with them, it wouldn't show up there anymore. But if they saved a copy of that file to their own computer, then they still might have it. So um, just a heads up that you're not totally wiping it off of their computer if they did something outside of the normal Google Drive stuff. Save that. Okay, I want to also just show you, since I sent a bunch of things to myself, what these look like. So this was the example of an email with a link that you might receive from someone or you might send out to someone. The link goes to docs.google.com and then has a bunch of stuff there. This is an example of me sharing it with someone not the link, but the share. And so it looks like it's coming from me, but it's actually sent from Google Slides. And it says that I was invited to view the presentation and I could open it up in slides. Or for this one, this is a fake resume. I was invited to edit the document and I can click there to open it in Docs. And then finally, this is a movie. Since um, they don't really have built-in video editing capabilities in Google Docs, I'm just, I just shared the video that a person could open and watch. Stacy? Yeah, go ahead. I have a quick question. If you if you send someone a file that is editable, uh, let's say like an MP3 that somebody could edit through, you know, software like that, then the person, are they able, so, and you give them, I guess you give them edit rights for that and then they can take it and do what they want or would they need to download it and then re-upload it? You know what I mean? Like if they're gonna actually work on it as a, maybe a music file or something like that. Right, so a music file would not be able to be edited through through this software. So you're uh -huh. right, that they, would, they could see it in their drive, they could download it, do whatever they want to it, and then they could share it back with you as a fresh file. Uh -huh. But it's really just the things that are text editing or word processing, um, like Excel uh -huh. spreadsheets and PowerPoint that uh -huh. can be edited regardless of which software they originated in and be edited through this program. Yeah, okay. that's a good question. So if I go to share this movie, let me just see what happens here. I wanna share it with my personal account. Even though this says editor, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of meaningless because I won't be able to make edits to it. If I go to open up this movie, um, 
the the only other things I could open with would require adding something new. Basically, this is just a video player that doesn't have any editing functions. So I can show, let me turn the volume way down. I can watch my little film here. Maybe. <laughs> I might be overwhelmed with bandwidth right now. Okay, yeah, let's not force okay. to do that. But yeah, so, you're right. So if the person then, but but what I'm on, so the advantage there could be, I mean, they can't edit it within this, within this drive, but they, like if there is a limit on email capacity, then that would be a way you could get it to them through the Google Drive and then they could download it and do what they need to do and re-upload it? Yes, absolutely. So, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. it, you would sort of think of it as though you emailed it to them and then they emailed you back a new version. Mm -hmm. Right, but sometimes those, those things can be large enough that you know your email will bump it out or you know won't let it go through so it sounds like this would be a way to put it up there to get around that limit yeah on some email okay yeah i would say that's that's how i use this at least half of the time is okay just because i tried to email something too big right okay thank you mm -hmm. in that example that mary was just giving mm -hmm. the person have to have in order to email it back to you, they would have to have Google Docs. So yeah, so let's say you, you put an MP3 on Google Drive and you sent them either the link or you shared the file with them. If they're going to edit it, they would have to download it and edit it in some other software. And then to get it back to you, um, if it's too big to fit in an email, then they would have to share it with you via Google Drive, or if they have some other like web space that they can share with you, then they could do it that way. Um, when, when I was a, a grad student, we had like server space that we could log into and put things up on the internet and then send someone that link. So I don't know how common that is for people. An average person wouldn't have that. And so Google Drive can sort of serve as that way of sharing things on the internet that are too big for, for email or social media kind of stuff. Okay, what other questions are there about sharing? I have one. Um, I've been allowed, uh, to share a Google Drive with um, some friends in Des Moines. And I don't remember, um, I think they had to send me an invitation that I had to respond to so that I could get in. And uh, let me see if this, this works. Hold on a second. Sure. Uh, well, you're sharing, so I can't share mine. Oh. But, um, there's a file on here that says shared with me and it's got a whole bunch of stuff on there that isn't mine, but there is one spot that is that I get to share or get access to. So the question I have is if I wanted to share the information within that file that technically belongs to somebody else, but I have access to it. If I wanted to share a piece out of that, um, would I then be able to um, send them a permission or how would I do that? Yeah, let's see what happens when I try that. So for my personal account, I shared this with this fake library account, Sally's resume. Okay. So now if I try to share Sally's resume, um, I need some other Gmail account. Let me see if I can think of one. <laughs> um, Fine if you want, I don't care. Well, this is going back to the first person, so that's kind of crazy, but um, let's see. I thought it might bring up my <laughs> my uh, address book. Let me try. Don't, don't away. That's all right. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I'm trying to get my mom's <laughs> email address here. There we go. Um, 
make her the editor. So this would be giving her lots of permission here. It's letting me do that. So that could be because I was given editor permissions. Um, I can't remember what permission I had on these others. Oh, here. So for this one, I'm just a viewer and I can't share. I would have to ask the owner to share this one. So it comes down to what permission they gave me initially. If I'm a viewer, I don't have the power to share. If I'm an editor, I can share. Okay, now where do I determine whether or not I'm an editor on that account? So if you click once to highlight the file that you're thinking about and okay. share with me, and then on the little person with the plus sign. Person with the plus sign, hold on. I did not get that, so hold on, let's see if I did. No, I'm not getting it, so evidently I'm not allowed. I'm getting one um, that says shared, which evidently means that they've, I'm sharing it with them and they're sharing with me, but we're, I don't have the capability of sharing it with anyone else except the, the owner of the drive. Okay. It's weird without me being able to share. I show you what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I can stop my share if you want to share yours. If it's not, um, I'm just conscious that we're being recorded. So I don't want your personal <laughs> information no, not, to make it into the recording. But there's nothing really personal in there that can't be seen. All right, let me go down here, share my screen. Hold on. Okay, I'm just checking the settings. Okay. okay. Did I blow it up? Sure did. Okay. New share. This is the one I want. Oh, share it. There we go. All right. Can we see that yet? No? No? Um, just, you are starting, you are screen sharing. So anyway, what I'm trying to do, I don't think you can actually see, see it. So. It looks like I can see it. If you click once on the file that you're thinking about, or really any of the files. Okay, that move? Yep. Okay. This is- you're uh, still in all these folders. Yeah, you'd have to wait until you got to an actual file, I think. Okay, so let's go to an actual file. All right. It, it showed up there too, but if you click once on one of these. Ah, uh, there it is, just once, yeah. I've been double clicking, all right. There you go. And if you click, if I click on that, I would be able to send this to a variety of people. Yeah. All right. So since it's giving you that option, that means that you were giving, given editor permissions for that. Okay. If you hadn't been given that permission, it would have told you the same thing it told me, which was, you're allowed to view this and you can't share it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. So um, give it back to the rest of the world. All right, I there hope, hope that was helpful to see another example. He has lots of files. They are better organized than my Google Drive has ever been, <laughs> my personal one. So you can really spend time organizing, putting things in folders within folders. Um, you can tell that he's been using this robustly. So thank you for sharing that example, Ken. How do you create folders on Google Drive? I was looking at your thing and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, let me share my screen again and I'll show you. So here we are back to my drive and it's under the new button, which is a little counterintuitive, I think because this is mainly where I would want to upload something, but I can also add a folder. And so I could say movies. And then I can drag this movie up into the movie folder. And then there it is. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. um, Stacy, up, I think yeah. it's right here. Your screen, I don't know if you can note down with the three little boxes right below the gear. Um, uh, okay, you got that. There's yeah. the, that right there. 
Okay, that puts it into the same form I had it in when you were share, when I shared my screen. What uh, this puts it into like a line item format, whereas this one puts it more of an into an icon based format. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought to bring that up. So you can control the the view that you have um, between grid and list view depending on your preferences. And it often gives you um, two of your most recently opened things at the top, two or three. Um, so don't be thrown off by that. You can just skip over those and get down to your actual files. Okay. Any other questions about saving and sharing things in Drive before I do a quick demonstration of docs, slides, and sheets. Stacy? Yeah, go ahead. It's just a quick question. Um, when you're sharing a Word document and for others, to, for everybody to edit, so you share it with them by sending them a link. You right? Can do it either and way. If they are edits tracked at all, Yes. Um, let's see. So I think I showed you that by clicking on the I for this sample letter, I can see that Stacy made edits. Okay. Being able to see exactly what was edited is not something that I have done before. <laughs> okay. I think I think we'll be able to see it. I just might have to poke around a little bit. Does yeah, anybody okay. does anybody on the call have experience with that? And want I've to used, walk through it? I've used tracking in Word a lot, but hmm. and so, it gets really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so version okay. history. Well, that'll be something to play around to try to. to yeah. Find. Let me. Um, I'm sure there's a lot online if you just search Google Docs, yeah, track edits, but why don't I try to look that up a little bit and I am, um, at the end of this, I'll send out an email with a handout that's got um, sort of a screenshot of these softwares to mm -hmm. just as a reminder for you. Um, and I'll, I'll put that answer in with it too. But I think, I think version history is maybe the best the place you would look yeah okay. okay so here here's what i started with uh -huh. paragraphs that say sample letter and then at 620 stacy got in and added these and purple she, okay pictures. so you can see what she added and i and i deleted the t the second 20 for uh -huh. and so okay. if i if i got out of this and i made some more changes and then came back to file and version history. Um, it put my little green icon, means I'm looking for the green of what was added at 750. Right, good. And I guess I could click to not show the changes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can con okay. control yeah, that. Good. Well. Thank you. Yeah, good question. All right, well, since we sort of got into Google Docs there, let's, let's go ahead and talk about that. So when I click on this new button again, it has learned that I've used some apps before. Docs, Sheets, and Slides are my main options that I've used before, but there's also more things that you might play with. Another way to get to them is in this nine dots up by my login and it may, may show them if I've used them recently or they may be buried way way down. So you can open up Google Docs in one of those ways if you're already in Drive or you can type directly in docs.google.com or slides.google.com or sheets and this will be on the handout that I email you so you don't have to worry about writing that down right now. But let's see, we'll let this open up Google Docs for me. 
So as we kind of already mentioned, why would you use these? Because Microsoft Office costs money and it's really tied to one computer for the most part. Um, Google Docs is in the cloud, so you can access your same documents from anywhere without lugging around flash drive, etc. cetera. Um, that said, you can use Microsoft Office or other software and use this as a way to, to store and access your things on the fly. So I'll just quickly show you how these three programs work so you can see how similar they are to Microsoft Office. They all have some differences, which I'm sure they had to build in for legal reasons, but they have pretty much the same functionality. And the best part about Google Docs is that you can try these options out for free to see if they work for you. So here we are, we're in Google Docs, um, and let's just talk through what this page looks like. Um, it shows me some recent documents that I've used in here. And again, here's this formatting option if you prefer to see it as a list. Um, and then there are some templates. So um, if you're starting a resume or something else, you can use the templates that they have in a gallery, or you can start with a blank brand new document. So let's do that. So right away, this should look somewhat similar to Microsoft Word for you. You'll see that in this bar, there's some text formatting options, the font, things like that. You can do left, center, justify options, um, type some nonsense. So you can highlight that and come up to edit and copy and paste just like you would normally in Word. And I used the keyboard shortcut. Maybe it didn't like that control V. <laughs> that works. It's just, um, it might be a little freaked out that I'm also on Zoom right now. Um, there we go. And you can also insert a photo like you would on Word, um, other elements that you might want to build into your document, headers and footers, lots of the same things that you would see in Microsoft Word. You can change the overall formatting for your document, um, the page setup for what size of paper, all of that stuff is built in here. Um, one thing to be aware of, um, well, so you'll change your, the name of your document up here and it's pulling what I first wrote here, so this is just going to be example. One thing to notice is that saving is doesn't work the same. So I do not need to go to file and save. In fact, that's not even an option here. I'm going to look at two places up here. One, it says that my last edit was made seconds ago. And if I'm typing, it'll, it'll update itself as I go along. And then this little cloud with a check mark shows me my status. So all the changes have been saved to drive, period. Um, this little message is new to me. This document is not ready for offline use. If I lose my internet connection, I can't edit this document. Okay, well, that's fine because I think of this as a tool that I only use when I have an internet connection. But I guess if that mattered for you, maybe if you were walking around with a laptop and you wanted to be able to, um, to work on your files, even if you weren't in a place where you had Wi-Fi, you could explore that option. But basically, it's saving right away as you go. If I type a whole bunch of more stuff, it's saving, right? As I type, it's automatically saving and saved right away. Um, but that said, you might want to um, download it. And your options here are pretty robust. You could save this as a Microsoft Word document, 
if you know that you're going to give it to someone who will be opening it in Word, or if you know that you will want to do the final version in Word. You could also save it as a PDF, which is very handy. Or you could just leave it as it is within your Google Docs and it'll be saved back as a file. If I click on this blue icon, it takes me back to that first page for Docs. And here's my example file among my things. And I can rename it, delete it, things like that. Since I'm in um, Docs, let me just show you quickly that if I go back to Drive, and I'm, it, it comes naturally for me to type in the address, but I suppose I could have also clicked on these dots and found a drive that way too. Um, goodness. Here I am in Drive. I'm seeing my files, right? And so if I scroll down when it's ready, here's my example. And the icon is for Google Docs, which I'm getting, you know, you get familiar with as you go. So I can find it either from Drive, double click it, and put myself in Google Docs, or start in Docs itself. And since we are really close to eight o'clock, that took me by surprise. <laughs> um, I'll take questions about Google Docs or I'll really quickly demo for you what sheets and slides look like. Um, but this is really struggling to load, so let me close out of some of these tabs. Any questions about Google Docs? Great. Okay, then let's switch to um, to Sheets, which is their version of Excel. I made um, a fake spreadsheet earlier with a car budget, but you could start with a blank one as well, or it's something from their template gallery. I'm going to double click on the one I already started, and you can see this looks pretty much just like Excel looks. I've got the same option where I can control the font. I can change the width of my columns. I can type things in. Um, and I can adjust my equations so that I have my, my total sums, things like that. And you'll um, you can create those sums by going to insert and adding a function. And the sum is how I did that one. So that has a lot of the standard Excel options as well. Same thing where you can download it as an Excel file, a PDF, some other options. And you can check that it already saved the changes to the drive for me. Finally, I'll quickly show you um, the slides option, which is their version of PowerPoint. Yeah. And so here you can see that I have, I have two presentations that either I created or were shared with me. And you can narrow that down if you want to just see things that you made or others made. You can start with a blank one or with a template that they provide. And this looks almost exactly the same as PowerPoint, right? <laughs> so you can add in your title, add in your subtitle. You can um, insert objects, insert a new slide. And they've got some themes that they offer that make it a little bit faster to change the way it looks than maybe PowerPoint does. Um, change it on the fly for you. It's saying the last edit was made. It's saying that I, all my changes are saved. And again, I can save that 
in different formats. I do have the option within Docs, Slides, and Sheets to share from right here. So I can either share from here or I can go back into Drive and click on my link and share options. So I'm gonna name it before I can start sharing, that's fine. And I can type in my people I wanna share with and the permission level and send them an email letting them know that they now can view this slideshow I made. And you can see it that they, I added a person. So that was a very quick <laughs> overview of those. Um, what kind of questions do you have? And maybe I'll stop sharing. If you add a person to your, what you just did, slides, um, and then you build another one, and that, would that person still be on that list? Or do you have to go in and add, subtract as you go along? If, if I added another slide to that document, or if I made a whole new slideshow? Whole new slideshow. I would have to give them permission. Okay, so if you want to you want to have that one, one, but then I created a new one that I didn't want her to see. I wouldn't have to worry about it because she would not be on the the new one. Yeah, the default is that anything new that you make is private, and no one else can see it except you. You have to do a specific action in order to put it out in the world. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. And since you are so, you have so many folders, that's gotten me thinking, I wonder if you made a folder and gave access to the folder and then made new things within it, if that would automatically give them access to those, that's possible. You could play around with that if, if you ever wanted to save yourself the time of sharing lots of documents and making new ones, you could try that out. The one that I showed you that had a lot of files within a folder, mm -hmm. within, so it was a folder entitled KFMG. Within that were some other folders, mm -hmm. and within each of those folders were more files. So every time I add like week number 24, anybody who has access to the KFMG folder can see that file number 24. Okay. If yeah. You know, that's I, what they I want to put it in there, they can go and see it. So, and then do other things with it. So, every time I add another file or create a new folder, number 25, and put files in it, the owner and anyone else entitled to view it can then see the new folder and files. So, that I, I think that answers your, your, your query. Yeah. Yeah, that does. So, that would be handy if you. Let's say you had a club that you worked with and you didn't want to have to go through and add 12 people to every new file or every new meeting minutes that you did. If you put them into a folder and you give the folder access to all those people, then that should hold for anything that you add to that folder going forward. Yep. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ken. That's helpful. <laughs> What other questions are there? Yeah, it's really powerful. It's good stuff to know. Um, can I ask, yeah, you said they're 15, 15 megabytes or whatever for your email address. If you have more than one Gmail address, then do you get 15 megabytes for each of those email addresses? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it's, it's gigabytes, so that's pretty big. Um, I had some videos of my grandpa <laughs> that each video was one gigabyte. So if you went very video heavy, you could use that up pretty fast. But um, if you're using smaller files, the 15 gigs should last you a really long time. And if you have multiple accounts, you could be strategic about spreading things out. Yeah. Other questions? Anyone? I had, to buy, I had to buy an extra 100 gigabits because those, a lot of those files are radio files and they, are, they can get massive, especially when I got to stockpile them. So, you know, for archiving and so on. So, yes, I had to buy more space, but um, I've been doing this now since March. 
bought a hundred gig and been doing this remote radio broadcasting. And I still got as big as that file was that you saw all those folders and files, it's still less than 50 gigabit. So I've got about 51 gigabit left to play with. So it's, but uh, yeah, unless you're going to do something like that, that uh, 15 will hold up quite well. And let's see, I didn't, I didn't look at the pricing recently. Did you pay something like $10 for that? Or do you remember how much it cost? Uh, my firstborn male child, which <laughs> I was okay because I had girls. So, uh, no, seriously, I think it was like 10 or $15. For oh, yeah. Okay. It wasn't but very much. I just looked it up. To get 100 gigs, you would pay nineteen ninety nine a year. So 20 bucks a year, that's cheap. That's like a little less than $2 a month. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's lasting quite a while. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're like, I threw a lot at you. So what I'll do is I'll send you an email that's got the screenshots of all of those different services, just as a reminder of where you, your eyes should look when you're using them. I'll also have a short survey if you have time to fill out the quick survey and if you have suggestions for other things you'd like the library to teach classes on, I'll be glad to hear that. And then if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to email me with any question, big or small, and I'll see what I can do to help you. Tracy, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, what happens to the files if you stop renewing? So that's a good question for Ken. Um, if, you did, if you didn't pay your $19.99 next year, my guess is that you would lose access to them until you paid up. Yeah, I, I, I'm firmly convinced that, you know, um, if I bought it on March 15th, of this year on March 14th would be the last time I'd be able to get into anything over that 15 gigabit. It would probably keep the last 15, but I don't know that. It yeah, might it be the first 15 and then just wipe out everything that I've done since then. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That'd be an interesting question to ask Google and say, okay, I, I bought 100 gig and I don't want to renew it. What happens to that 85 gig that I'd build up? I'd probably just say bye bye. I think what you would do if you decided that that wasn't, if you weren't planning to continue, um, you would take the time to download each of the files to your computer or an external hard drive or something. And there, there would be no need to lose the files. It would just mean losing the online access to them. Right. Comes in pretty handy. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I hope that you'll all go forth and, <laughs> and play with making files. No one will see the files that you're goofing around with unless you specifically share them. So you can practice and see if, if this fits your needs at all. Um, and anytime you're trying to send an email and you think, oh, I've been stopped because that file was too big that I'm trying to attach, remember Google Drive is your friend to get it sent. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for spending your evening with me. <laughs> and we'll, we'll hopefully see you soon.